Hello Frenzy, my name is Kate Shark and welcome to Rain Swept. Now, this is a game, uh, it's actually a demo, and it was recommended to me, I think, on Game Jolt. Um, and it's currently in demo, I know they're still developing it, but I figured, what the hell, I'll give it a shot. Look like a pretty cool concept, so what the hell, I'll go ahead and play it, so I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to go ahead and hit new game. There we go. Monday, 12.14 a.m. October 7th, 1996. Oh. Oh. Shit. And I love the the art and the graphics of this. Okay. Oh, uh, press E on keyboard, A on controller to continue, okay? All right, I'm here. Time to see what this is all about. Okay, um, ooh, okay, enter him, A, D, what's this? Movement. Okay, I see. And then inventory. Da, 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 da. Okay. Those skinny legs. Wait, what was that? That's my car. I just got here. Okay. I'm not going back now. Okay, I see. Those skinny legs. Looks like they've been here a while. Can I? Oops. Oh, I don't want that. Terrible. Oh, what? I said terrible, terrible business, all this. Pa! This was only a matter of time, everyone knows that. I know. Still, they were so young. Young and stupid, you mean, the stories I've heard? I guess you're right. It was just a matter of time. It's not nice. What? It was a matter of time. <laughs> it's really coming down today. We should get back home. A few more minutes. I want to see what happens. It's a crime scene. Nothing's going to happen. I'm going to catch a cold. That's all. <sighs> Good lord. Bloop, bloop. Ma'am, please, you need to back away a little, okay? What happened here? A murder? Johnny, get under the umbrella. Granny, I want to leave. Can I go back to the shop? Could see this coming a mile away. Ma'am, please. Granny, please. All right, Johnny, let's go. There's no point standing here now. Oh, my. I knew this would happen. We should have done something. There's nothing we could have done. Chris is responsible, I'm so sure. It's hard to disagree, but let's not speculate. Well, Detective Anderson, right? The chief is inside. They've been waiting for you. You need to control the crowd, officer. Uh, you need to push the crowd further from the scene, officer. What? You'll have to speak up. I can't hear you over the rain. <laughs> the crowd, handle them. There could be evidence out here. We can't have them... I can't, we can't have all this crowd trampling over the evidence. Oh yes, I'm trying. Hey, hey Williams, what the hell are you doing? 
trying to prop this tape, sir. It won't stay. We'll get some sticks and drive them in. Yes, sir, Richard. Dick. <laughs> Don't call for Richard. Richard's on leave. Do it yourself. Goodness. Sorry, detective. Thing is, we're short of manpower here. Uh, we weren't prepared for this kind of thing. First time in decades. And to top it all off, rain out of nowhere. Just get the crowd under control. I'm heading inside. Yes, detective, don't worry. Richard! I mean, Williams! <laughs> Okie dokie. Wait a minute, what's that? Let's see what that says. An open window. Hmm. Okay, it's interesting. The crowd is too close to the crime scene. Okay. The number of cops is too few. This is poor. Wait a minute. Let's go here. And... Wait a minute. So that's the way inside? Yes, I'm well aware. wonder if the chief sent me all the way into Pineville for this case. Still, I want me to find out. Okay. Should I go in? Go in. No point hanging around here. Yeah, there's nothing really here. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Yeah, right? That's the sheriff. I should talk to him first. Okay. Should we... I feel like I'm just walking right... Michael? Huh? What? Oh, God. What's happened? Detective, are you okay? Uh, yeah, I think so. Obviously not. I guess I'm a little tired after the long drive here. Er, Detective Anderson, right? The head office called in to say that you'd be joining us for this investigation. I'm Sheriff Har Harris, and this is Lieutenant Watt. We appreciate the department sending help, but, uh, I don't think we need it. The case is ready to be wrapped up. Well, what do we have here? The victims here are Christopher Green, age 26, died from a bullet wound to the head, looks self-inflicted. And Diane Miller, age 24, single bullet wound through the abdomen. The victims lived together, but were unmarried. Um, any witnesses? Just an extra neighbor who claims to have heard a single gunshot. We can interview him shortly. Wait, single gunshot? But there was two. The weapon... What do we know about the weapon? Uh, bullet shots were fired from 45 caliber pistol. Ballistics report will let us know more. Time of death. According to the next door neighbor, a single gunshot wound was heard at oh, 15 hours. Or, yeah. So, 12, 15. We received a call about 20 minutes um, and here in another five minutes. We found them upon arrival Dead upon arrival to confirm the timing. Any signs of an intruder? No force of s signs of forced entry. The door was locked from the inside when we arrived. An officer climbed through the open window here to open the door. There were no footprints outside that window. Except the officers. He was careful. No signs of struggle or marks on the bodies either. Uh, crap. Honestly speaking, the detective, we think it's pretty obvious what's taking place here. What do you mean? They had a reputation. They weren't exactly a happy couple. The whole town knows this. Diane was shot point blank range in Chris, with Chris's gun, probably by Chris. Probably is not good enough. He then went ahead and shot himself, as the wound is clearly self-inflicted. So you see, sending you here unnecessarily complicates things. Let's remain silent. It's obviously a case of murder-suicide, Detective. I'm gonna just remain silent. Mm -hmm. Are you suggesting there's domestic violence involved? It would seem so. It was never reported, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. True. Most don't report it. So, rumors. You may call it that, but uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. I'm not sure that... Yeah, I'm not sure that applies here. And they were never really able to fit in in this town. They were new here, moved in about six months ago. Never got out much, didn't make any friends. We don't need to analyze the obvious detective. That would be insufficient. It would be insufficient that you didn't. Officer Blunt will assist you through the course of your work here. Hello, detective. And uh, one more thing. We're looking to wrap this case up quickly and cleanly. We don't want it to drag if it can be helped. We have an important festival coming around in a week's time, so uh, you might say this is rather bad timing. So there's no need to go around complicating things, all right? Just give me a story that works so we can close this case quickly. Uh, 
I want to give you a sarcastic reply. Yeah, sure. Can't wait to wrap this case up. All right, then we'll see you soon. Goodbye. Okay. Anyway, have a look around the room if you'd like. Come and talk to me when you're done. Oh, that's right. I got to move like this. Okay, what's this? <laughs> I like the little Chris96. It's signed Chris96. I'm guessing Chris built some of the furniture around this house. But that's a cupboard. Okay, so we saw that. Uh, gunshot to the stomach. The damage in the residue would suggest the shot was taken at point blank rage. That rules out the possibility of her being shot through an open window. She should have been... She would have been in the line of sight from outside, though. There's no mistake in it. The perpetrator would have been inside the house to cause this kind of a wound. Whether that was Chris or someone else, it's hard to say at the moment. Okay. Okay. 45 caliber pistol. As the lieutenant said, it looks pretty old. It can hold seven rounds. There's still four rounds here. So that means three rounds were fired from this gun at some point in time. If two were fired last night, where's the third? Was it used on some other day? The gun belonged to Chris, according to Lieutenant Watts. Let's assume Chris or Diane weren't the ones to use it. Is there anyone else that could have known they, where they kept the gun? From Pineview? I really doubt it. Remember, no signs of force injury. Could it be someone they were comfortable with or trusted? None that I can think of. Okay. Oh, wait. Bullet went to the head. Skull is badly damaged. Most of the side has been blown off. His body position, the way he fell, would indicate that he was sitting sideways on the chair facing Di where Diane's body is now. The angle of the shot indicates that he was shot from this side. If someone shot him, they were standing in front of the refrigerator. Oh. No clues, though. He could have been shot from that window. At the moment, it's shut. Let's get it checked for fingerprints and footprints outside. So it entered and left through there. We should have the fingerprint results in a couple of days, detective. Don't forget, there aren't any footprints outside. If someone shot him from outside, then Chris would have sat facing the refrigerator. That would make sense. That way the killer wouldn't need to enter the house. But in that case, who shot Diane? Gunpowder residue on his right hand. Hard to disagree with the lieutenant there. This is strong evidence for the victim shooting himself. Unless it was made to look that way. Wait, what are we looking at? A chair has fallen on its back. Looks like Chris fell off the chair before or after being shot. What the? Okay. Red wine. It looks like a new bottle was opened yesterday. No one drank from this glass. But it seemed that Chris was sitting by himself at the table and drinking wine, waiting for someone to join him. Probably Diane. Whether he was waiting for her or for someone else, we don't know yet. A glass of wine was knocked over. It looks like wine, but there seems to be blood in there as well. How did blood spatter make it in this direction? It doesn't make sense. Officer Blunt, I think there's more. There's been more than two gunshots that we're seeing here. But... Not very professional. I hope they know what they're doing. Okay. Oh wait, that's what I want. There we go, that's what I want. Uh, 45 ACP rounds, it's a box of 20 rounds. There's 13 here, which means 7 are missing, 2 were used last night. 4 left in the gun that we saw earlier. If there were 2 used last night, there's still 1 on the... On the Sorry, I'd accounted for. Was that used on some other day? Okay, so... I don't think there's anything else. Hmm, what's this? Wait, oh, did I hit something? I did. Okay, yeah, we already saw that. Okay, I don't know if there's anything else to see. Just to double check, but I don't think there is. Nope, okay. So we will go back, talk to Watts. Shall we proceed? Yes. Yes, I'm done. All right, let's have a chat with Mr. Willis outside. What's this? The rain has finally let up. 
Now you bring me coffee. How nice of you. Right, this is Mr. Willis. He lives right here next door. Coffee detective? Yes, please. You can ask him any questions you have may have about last night. Right, Mr. Willis. Can you tell me everything that you saw or heard during last night's events? Well, see. I'd headed off to bed around 11 p.m. as I usually do after a glass of whiskey. Helps me sleep, you know? Anyway, somewhere around 12, 15 a.m., I'd say I was woken up by a loud bang. I ran to my bedroom window that looked straight down at their place. And what did you see? Nothing. Their kitchen lights were on, but that's about it. I went on my phone and called Lieutenant Watts here straight away. Uh... Yeah, he's sitting... How long did it take you to get to the window once you heard the shot? About a couple of seconds, Detective. I'd say five. No more than five, I'd say. I nearly fell out of my bed when I heard the shot, so you might say I was halfway there already. Did you see anyone on the street? No, Detective. Everything was exactly the same as always. You said you heard one gunshot. Yes, the whiskey usually knocks me out pretty good. So if there'd been more, I didn't hear them. Mm. Do you live alone? Yes, I do. Never got married. It's a, it's a uh, long story. One meant to be talked to over a couple of whiskeys, know what I mean? Can anyone confirm your whereabouts? Uh, no, I was just at home, you see. Am I a suspect? It's procedure, Mr. Wood. I know Mr. Willis. He's cool. Oh, is that all it takes? Uh... We'll need to have to talk later, Lieutenant. Talk about what? Just later, okay? Okay, Sherlock, whatever you say, Holmes. Snicker. Did Chris and Diane have many visitors, friends, etc.? No. No. Not at all, in fact. Uh, in all this time, I only saw, maybe saw Jack coming over to fix their car, and Father Smith came over a couple times when they'd newly moved in, a year back almost. Now, people rarely ever visited them because they kept to themselves, see? Never made any friends here. But sometimes folks don't like those kinds either, so I can't really say, you know what I mean? No, please elaborate. You won't find anyone crying over their deaths here. Nobody really knew them. Never got out much. Is there any other information you'd like to share with us, Mr. Willis? I, I don't know if this is useful, but you might have heard about Chris and Diane. They looked pretty happy when they first moved in. More recently, though, I heard Diane crying a couple times, usually late at night. See, the whiskey knocks me out early, so maybe that's why I never heard all this before. But a couple times I was up a little later. One night, about a month ago, I heard pretty bad things. There were some loud sounds, like stuff being flung around and such, see? I heard someone crying. I was thinking to myself that maybe I should call the police, but then it quieted down all of a sudden. We never received any calls of domestic violence, but people have often talked of stories of this kind. Can you remember when you heard this, Mr. Willis? I was up late writing an important letter. I think it must have been somewhere between 1st to 3rd of last month. First to third of September. All right. Anything else? No, that's all I know about this. Thanks for your help, Mr. Willis. We'll be in touch if we need anything else. No problem. And uh, thanks for the coffee. You're not welcome. So, Detective, you said you want to have a talk later. Is now a good time? Yes, Lieutenant. Please don't tell witnesses they're not under suspicion, especially not in front of them. So basically you're telling me that I don't know how to do my job as that. Yes, 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 exactly. All I'm saying is in this case isn't all wrapped up as you'd like it to believe. How can you not see what's right in front of you? It's so obvious. It's not. Mr. Willis didn't see anything outside the house after the gunshots, and there were no signs of anyone forcing entry either. On top of that, considering how rough things were between the two of them, you heard what Mr. Willis said, right? You know, the am amount of information we have as of now is very little. It's not the complete picture. We need to dig deeper if we want to know the truth and not just confirm our assumptions. Well, what about the door, huh? How was it locked from the inside? Explain that. 
I check the door, it locks from its, it locks itself from inside when you pull it close, regardless of whether you pull it from the outside or push it from inside. Yeah, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying that there's no conclusive evidence yet. Well, fine then. Dig as deep as you'd like, detective. You won't find anything new here. I was perfectly capable of handling this case myself, but of course the head department had to complicate things. In any case, Sheriff Harris will probably want to wrap this case up before the festival, so don't expect him to wait more than a week. I have to head to the station now, officer. Escort Detective Anderson to his hotel. Will do, sir. Okay. We'll come back in the evening to search the house. Letters, diaries, things of that sort. Officer Blunt. All right. Oh. Uh, when can we expect the autopsy results? Day after tomorrow, according to the coroner, but I'll confirm and let you know. I'm guessing there were more than two bullets shot last night. We should take another look around the kitchen just to make sure. Three bullets, but... Hmm. We're actually glad that you're here, you know. Although the sheriff and Lieutenant Watts would rather not admit it. Even to themselves. This is like the first murder here in the last hundred years or so. We have no idea how to deal with it. I mean... Uh, it's alright. I know what you mean. I just joined the force a month back, for instance. And a murder already? I'm not sure if I'm ready. I kind of knew them, you could say. I've never known anyone that's been murdered before, you know? I do. Uh, it's kind of weird. A bit sad. I know as an officer I'm not supposed to feel that way and all. You'll be fine. Give it time. Thanks, detective. That means a lot. Uh... What do you know about Chris and Diane? It's not much. It's mostly what Mr. Willis said earlier today. Nobody knew them, really. They came in here, kept to themselves. You hear stories about them. Everyone thought they were kind of some, some kind of weirdos. I admit I kind of agreed with that sentiment, too. I feel bad about that now. There's no reason to make assumptions about someone's character, and character can't be used as evidence. So I'd like to help figure out what re the real story is, whatever it may be. The sheriff said there's a festival in town next week. What's that about? Oh, it's an annual thing. We have it every October. There's a fair on the Market Street. There's food, rides. We get a lot of tourists from nearby states around this, that time. It's a good source of revenue for some of our smaller businesses here. That, of course, is less important in light of recent events. Good to hear you say that. Of course, we can't go around trying to wrap up cases based on our assumptions, whatever the situation may be. I mean, these were people's lives that ended, and it's our job to figure out what really happened. So I guess what I'm saying is, you can count on me during this investigation. Thanks. I'm dialogue. I do know someone that was murdered. I, uh, I'm hoping the local police will let me do the job I've been sent to do, though. I don't mean you. Detective, I know what you mean. Honestly speaking, Sheriff Harris is an asshole. I'm serious, he doesn't care about anything except running off home and taking it easy. This case probably ruined his plans to relax and enjoy this festival week. I hate people like that. Lieutenant Watts, though, he's really sweet. I know he comes across as a little obnoxious, but oh my god. Oh, shit! I saw her. She was right there. Why am I seeing her? Why am I thinking of her? Oh. Oh, wait, that's me. <clears throat> okay, so I think what I might do is leave this part off here. I know that um, this is just the demo, and I think the demo takes about an hour to play. And I've been playing for just under half an hour, so I will come back and wrap this up in another episode later on. Uh, probably here in the next one. But, um... <clears throat> But if you want to try this demo for yourself, uh, I will leave a link to it in the description box below. Uh, and it's, uh, they're currently taking donations, so if you feel in obliged to contribute, I highly encourage it. Um, I'm having a ton of fun with it so far. Uh, and I really can't wait to finish the demo, which I will probably do here very shortly. Um, but in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching this episode. Be sure to chomp down on that like button if you did like it. Leave a comment down below with any other game suggestions or video ideas that you'd like to see from me. Share this channel with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already to see other videos that I've done. We'll see you all for the next one.